All right, so here is the review for dividing whole numbers and decimals. Okay. So first we're going to start with the uh, mental math. Now, when we're dividing by powers of 10, the key is let's count the zeros, and we're going to move the decimal point that many times. Because we're dividing, we're going to move it to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the number, copy the exact same digit. So 101, 5, 1015. Two zeros in the hundred. So that means I'm going to move the decimal point twice. Once, twice. Copy the digits. One, four, zero, six, seven. There's one zero and ten. It means I move the decimal point in one place. Again, I'm moving it to the left because I'm dividing, which is making the number smaller. Now, here I've got an exponent. My exponent is four. That tells me that 10 to the fourth power is 10,000, four zeros. I need to move the decimal point four times. So again, I'm going to copy the digits, 27942. Decimal points here, one, two, three, four. Again, I don't have to put a zero in front because zero is the same thing as nothing. Here, my exponent is three, so that tells me to move the decimal point three times. Six, three, four, zero, four, one are the digits. Okay, I'm going to move it three times. It was in right here, so one, two, three. There's my answer. Okay, so that is. Uh, Dividing by powers of 10. All right, estimating each quotient. Now, I'm going to count by fours, because that's my divisor, because I'm splitting this into four groups, till I pass 13. Now, here's what makes dividing or estimating quotients so much different, because I want my numbers to come out even. It's so much easier when I divide by uh, a number that it comes out even. There's nothing left over. Okay. So when I count by fours, the two closest multiples of 4 to 13 are 12 and 16. Okay. Now I've got two digits here, so that means I'm going to add two zeros. I'm going to add two zeros, and then I divide. 12 divided by 4 is 3. I add my two zeros. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Add my two zeros. These numbers should be consecutive. Three fours are consecutive. Okay. Again, I'm going to count by sixes. Until I pass 34. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. So those are the two multiples I'm going to use. So I've got 30, 36. I'm going to add two zeros. 1, 2, 1, 2. 30 divided by 6 is 5. And then I add those two zeros. 36 divided by 6 is 6. I'm going to add those two zeros. Next section. We're going to divide. Here, I want my quotient to be a decimal. So I can get six groups. Subtract. Bring down. I can't get any groups of 6 out of 0. So I'm going to put a 0 there. I bring down. Put a zero there because I still can't get any groups. Decimal point because that's what Paul Abdul told us to do straight up. Bring the zero down. I get five. Now you'll notice I did not multiply by zero because I know that zero times six is zero. Zero minus zero is zero. Zero minus or three minus zero is three. So that's why I did not uh, bring it down. Now over here it says quotient as a fraction. So the process is the same. I'm going to subtract, I'm going to bring down, I'm going to bring down. So I've got three left over. So I just make that a fraction. Okay, so 600, 3 six, or 605 tenths. Exact same number. The value of those two digits, the value of those two things are exactly the same. Okay, so let's look at 1,035 divided by 12. Can't get any groups here. 10 is less than 12. How about 103? I know that there are 8 groups, which is 96. So when I subtract, I get 7. Bring down the 5. 
And I got a group again. Six groups, 72. Subtract. It's not finished yet, and I need it as a decimal. I need it as a decimal, so I got to add a zero. Bring it down. I know that's two groups. It's 24. Add another zero. Bring it down. That's five. 60. 86 and 25 hundredths. Now let's do the same thing, only I want my answer as a fraction. What's left over in fraction form? 96. Subtract. I get 7. Bring down the 5. I'm sorry, yeah, bring down the 5. That is 6 groups, so 72. And 3 twelfths. 3 twelfths is the exact same thing as 25 hundredths, so I know I'm right. Alright, so we're going to make these fractions into decimals. So again, my numerator is my dividend, and my denominator is my divisor. So I have 15 divided by 25. Remember, my rule of thumb is decimal point and add four zeros. I may not need them all, but I'm going to put them there. Okay. This number is less than 1. So I know for a fact that I'm, I, I'm not going to put any numbers there Okay, because it's less than 1. Okay. So how many, well, how many quarters are in 150? Well, there are $1.50. There are 6. And it comes out even. That's it. That was a quick one. Then I've got seven divided by eight. Again, I'm adding my decimal point and four zeros. And then I divide. So I can get, uh, let's see, that is eight groups, 64. Subtract six, bring down the zero. 7, 56, subtract, bring down the 0, make that look like 6, and that would be 5. Came out even, I'm done. So 875 thousandths. Again, 7 eighths is less than 1, 875 thousandths, less than 1. Okay. So let's find in the quotient. We've got some decimals in my uh, dividend. So I've, I go 8 and 3 tenths divided by 5. Now, because I start with a decimal, I've got to finish the decimal. So if it doesn't come out even, I'm going to keep adding zeros. Subtract, bring down the 3. Oop, the first thing I forgot to do is move the decimal point. Okay. So 6, we'll pull 6 groups of 5 out of there, so 30. I, it doesn't come out even, so I've got to add a 0 and finish the problem. Not even, 1 in 66 hundredths. Okay. Let's go over here. So I've got 96 hundredths divided by 3 hundredths. Now I am not allowed to have a decimal in my divisor. So I've got to move it over twice, also known as multiplying by 100. So I move this over twice which is also multiplying by 100. So I treated them the same, a golden rule. Treat the dividend and the divisor the exact same. Okay. Now, I divide. Nothing goes here. I can get three groups of three out of nine. Subtract, get zero, bring down the six. And I that is two groups. And that comes out even, 32. So if I take 96 hundredths, split them into groups of three hundredths, I get 32 groups. Okay. All right. So the three basketball teams from ZCHS, 45 total people, they advance to their games. If each van can hold 12 people, how many vans will be needed? So again, so 45 divided by 12. Three groups, so 36. Subtract, and I get 9. So my answer is 9, or I'm sorry, 3 and 9 twelfths. Can I take, am I allowed 9 twelfths? of a van. Can I take 9 twelfths of a van? No. So I need four vans. If I take three vans, 
I only get uh, those nine people, they get left behind. We don't want to leave anybody behind. Okay. All right, two more problems. Okay. I went to the bakery and asked how many dollars I had left. How many donuts, sorry, they had left. I was told 85. How many dozen can I purchase? So 85 divided by 12. Okay. That's 7. 84. 1 12th. So how many dozen can I purchase? Well, I've got seven full dozen and one twelfth of the next dozen. So how many full? I can purchase seven dozen donuts. Okay. Last problem. I'm cutting up a board to make shelves. I need four shelves. If the board is 11 feet long, how long is each board? So I'm taking this 11 foot board, splitting it into four equal pieces four equal pieces. So this is two. Two full groups. So I know that each board is two and three-fourths feet long. Okay. Now, could I add a decimal point and a couple zeros there? Yeah. But I know that the, making it a fraction is quicker and it's not as much division. So each board is two and three-fourths feet long.